if you would uh, allow me to read the words of someone who does a lot of work in my district. She is a black trans woman, and because she will never have the opportunity to address this body in this manner, I wanted to give her voice a space. Uh, so these are her words. Um, As a child, I remember reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and taking great pride in the fact that I lived in the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. The architects of the Declaration of Independence repeatedly used the term inherent to describe all of our freedoms. And so I mistake it when you thought these promises would be extended to me as any other American, any American citizen. I was taught that this country was not made up of diverse people, but that diversity was actually celebrated. I thought all of this was part of the American way, but I was fooled. Somewhere in life, as I was arriving to my authentic self, I realized that the very thought of me existing and thriving produces hateful opposition, and that is manifested in the discriminatory laws that are a part of our larger system of oppression. This system positions and labels LGBTQ community members as other, and it has no real intention of accepting us and our existence. I continue to grapple with the fact that at one point, I was working three jobs, paying taxes, and supporting the state's economy. That allows landlords to evict me from my housing, allows doctors to restrict and deny my comprehensive health care, even though I was paying for insurance out of every check, and allows my employer to terminate me based not on my performance, but based on me knowing or being perceived as gay, lesbian, bi, or trans. Late, later, being black, I realized that the odds would never be in my favor. Does this distinguished body know that over the past 10 years, nearly 73% of all transgender women who have been killed were black? As we celebrate Pride Month, I ask, I demand, I hope, that you would center and uplift the black and Latina trans women who started the riots at Stonewall in 1969. Their names were Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. I thank them for not only starting the movement for LGBTQ equality, but for standing on the front lines against racism and police brutality. This is not a new fight. It is unnerving to realize the fight of 1969 is still being fought in 2020. The country appears to finally be awakening to its pervasive systemic racism and discrimination against black people. And it appears, too, that reform is on the horizon. Here in our state, it's high time we reckon with our own outdated and at-will laws and extend equality to LGBTQ Michiganders. How can me and my community be proud and productive members of a society, a system that sustains and supports discrimination? I want this body to take pride in my life because it has value. Even though my life expectancy as a black trans woman is only the age of 35 because we are being killed and hunted down in the streets, I am kept and encouraged by the depth of my unwavering faith in God. My hopes and dreams reside in my ability to maintain my relationship with Christ. As I celebrate pride, my pride is strengthened in the hope of tomorrow, not being the same as yesterday. Love always, Janie's Poindexter. These are words that you don't hear. This is a voice that we don't often get the opportunity to hear. And so I wanted to share that with you, noting that uh, this September I will celebrate my 35th birthday. And if I were a member of the black trans or the trans women of color community, that would be my life expectancy. And it is for a variety of systemic reasons. And today, here, every day, we have opportunities to address the core issues that affect why they die so soon. And I hope that we can do that together. Uh, Mr. President, I ask that my remarks be printed in the journal.